Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about Down syndrome. And when we talk about Down syndrome, we just going to talk about prenatal diagnosis of Down Down syndrome. Okay. Now this is a gynecology lecture. This is not just another pilia thing. Okay. You, I think you got it. So the Down syndrome is the most common non-lethal trisomy. That is the most common trisomy that happens into the human or in prenatal period. Trisomy 21 it is also called. 95% of this trisomy 21 is because of the non-disjunction in the part of meiosis 1. Okay. Other 3 to 4% are due to Robertsonian translocation and the rest 1 to 2% are due to mosaicism. Okay, now what important in gynecological point of view or obstetrical point of view when the maternal age is higher more than 30 years the risk of Down syndrome is going to be increased. Okay, if we see less than 30 years the, the, the actually the normal or normal risk of Down syndrome in the baby is of 1 by 1000. Okay, and if we go more than 35 the risk steadily increases if we go to more than 45 years of age with the mother there is a risk is 1 in 30 so it is very high risk at least 3.3 percent of all pregnancy are affected by down syndrome only so it's very serious thing so what we need in this thing we need a prenatal diagnostic techniques to diagnose early that the baby has a down syndrome and so that we can uh, go further with the defects now, uh, let's talk about something about clinical findings of the Down syndrome baby. So, in 25 to 30 percent cases in Down syndrome, there are major cardiovascular and other defects. So, when we find a, a, a fetus in the mother's womb that if the fetus is of Down syndrome, we must take a risk of that. There is a 25 to 30 percent cases there is a risk of major malformations so it's a very very high value okay major malformation so we need to talk about the future of the baby in that case now what are the defects are there the endocrine uh, uh, endocardial cushion defects vsds uh, git uh, abnormalities for example an anterior abdominal wall uh, abnormalities are there so it's it's very much problematic now, what are the features? Uh, quickly, brachycephaly, epicanthal folds, up slanting of palpable features, brush filled spots, fat neck bridge, uh, hypotonia, short finger, uh, sing uh, single palmar scene, uh, hypoplasia of the middle phalanx, hypoplasia of the middle phalanx of the fifth finger. Uh, uh, there is a gap between first and second toe. And yes, mental impairment of a mild to moderate category, not severe one. Now, let's come to the exact point we are talking about. We need a screening test. We need to identify accurately that the baby inside the mother's womb, the fetus, is of Down syndrome or not. And when, when we talk about the prognosis of the baby, when we talk about the continuancy of the pregnancy, we need to identify the Down syndrome uh, thing as early as possible. Possible in either first trimester, so that we can terminate it at that point on point of view only depending on the choice of the few uh, choice of the parents now what are the tests that available in first trimester in first trimester we have three things the one is knuckle translucency the knuckle translucency we see on ultrasound that makes it a sonographic marker okay knuckle translucency second is beta hcg that increases in Down syndrome. So we the second uh, marker, and the third is PA double PA that means placental associated pregnancy protein. So it's PA double PA. It actually decreases in Down syndrome. So in the first trimester, we have three markers. If we talk about second trimester, we have another four markers. Uh, when we talk about knuckle translucency, we don't have that marker in second trimester beta hcg yes the hcg continues to grow in 
continues to in be increased in Down syndrome. So beta HCG is also a marker of second trimester. Another three markers we do we do have is AFP, alpha fetoprotein. That is decrease in Down syndrome. That is another marker. Unconjugated estrogen or unconjugated estriol means E3 is also a marker. It decreases in Down syndrome. Inhibin A that is also increases in Down syndrome. So two actually two uh, biomarkers increase in Down syndrome that are HCG and inhibin. You need to remember this. Now let's talk one by one. Knuckle translucency. What is knuckle translucency? When we see the ultrasound of a baby of 11 to 13 weeks in sagittal view, complete sagittal view, see this one. In complete sagittal view, we are seeing the baby's head. What we see here is here that this thing is actually, um, let me change the pen. Uh, should I? Okay, right. See, this this thing here is the fetal skin skin of the back of the fetus and what is this this is the subcutaneous this is a tissue above just above the just in front of the uh, spine fetal spine so the, the the gap between this fetal skin and the tissue above the fetal spine is there in every in every fetus is there but it should not be more than 3 mm. If it is more than 3 mm, then the knuckle translucency positive test has been diagnosed. And the, then this is a very, very, my friends, this is a very, very powerful marker or powerful uh, detective of aneuploidy or Down syndrome. And that rate is 67% friends. Okay. Now, uh, nickel translucency is the most powerful factor. Uh, uh, more than three is actually the uh, abnormal criteria. Now, what are the other markers we see in the uh, ultrasound? In the absence of nasal bone, uh, reversal of the A wave in the portal vein, and other tricuspid regurgitation. You know, all these things can be seen can be seen in Down syndrome. Only knuckle translucency is has a power factor of 67 percent. So in 67 percent cases, when we find a knuckle translucency is present, there can be a Down syndrome. Now, what is the combined testing? Combined testing is all three tests we do: beta HCG, PAPA, PAWPA, and NT. Both, uh, three all. All these three tests actually makes 95 percent of detection rate. That is very important. 95 percent of detection rate. Now. Let's say uh, if we lose the second, uh, first trimester and we are in second trimester already now, what, what options we have? We don't have the options of doing NT now. And the one is PAPA, that marker, PAPA marker is actually not working in second trimester. So we do have a three more tri uh, three more markers for second trimester. That is uh, unconjugated estrogen, inhibin and AF. So AFP decreases, inhibin increases, and UE, that is estrogen, decreases. So if we do three tests, it is called triple test. Or if we do four tests, all four tests, we can call it quadruple test. Three tests in, in, in triple test, what we do in triple test, we do beta HCG, we do AFP, and we do unconjugated estrogen what we include in quadruple test is inhibin okay you got it the very simple it's very simple now what are the predictive values of this thing see if we do triple test only if we do the triple test only we have if we do triple test only we have 70 percent of detection rate if we do quadruple test we have 85 percent of sorry uh, 75 percent of detection right and if we do all tests every test for example uh, leaving the NT we do PAPA in first trimester we do beta HCG in first trimester we do uh, AFP uh, estrogen and inhibin in second trimester all all five tests we do if serial 
then we have 85 percent of detection rate you can you are getting 95 percent of detection rate in first trimester only with including the knuckle translucency so my friends you know you now know this thing a knuckle translucency is a very very important marker if we don't have all these steps and what now what we can do we have one thing that is NIPT that is non-invasive pregnancy test non-invasive prenatal diagnostic test what we do in this thing we we get a maternal serum we get a maternal sample if we identify the serum and we identify free floating DNA free fetal DNA into that mother a maternal serum okay what we are getting we are getting the DNA DNA of what not mother we are getting DNA of fetus in the maternal serum okay so now we can get this uh, this DNA and we can uh, do karyotyping and uh, amplification tests so we can uh, definitely do definitive test of uh, down syndrome that is 98 percent accurate okay suppose we got some screening test positive quadruple test uh, uh, double test triple test and uh, combined test what we need to do if we need to confirm that there is a di uh, down syndrome we need to get dna and after dna we need to do karyotyping on the karyotyping only we can see that there is a trisomy or monosomy any other uh, uh, genetic problems so at the end of the day we what we need to do is karyotyping to confirm the diagnosis the, this karyotyping we directly can do with what the free fetal DNA but again it is not a confirmatory test confirmatory test is only we get the fetal tissue in uh, from uh, either amniocentesis or either chorionic villus sample what we need to do is we need to get the real fetal sample the NIPT is not also very very accurate okay so thank you for this thing